Privat, baby. I think that's Russian. Oh, the computer just died, dude. The music was just getting good. Privat, everybody. That's Russian. I, I try, I'm try, trying to learn how to speak Russian. I got one word down. Privat. That means, that means hello in Russian. Did you know that? I do now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, everybody. Top of the morning to you. Cheers to this one. Cheers to the Underground 4 podcast. We are back. It's uh, Thursday. My computer just died, so uh, I can't tell you what time it is. I think it's like 1.45. 1.56. Oh, Mr. Apple Watch over here. Dude, Apple Watches are cold. They're such a waste of money, though, dude. Like, I, I, I've got the time. Like, all right, let's be honest. Do you use your watch for time, or do you? is it fun? It's fun. Well, I can use it to cheat in school, too. All right. I go in Oakland, right? Yeah. Oh, Oakland, watch out. You got a cheater <laughs> on your hands. Drew Allison. What's up, everybody? I know I already said this like three times, but who cares? Um... We got an episode of the Underground 4 happening right now. Um, Drew is, uh, you know, he's one of those kids where, you know, he thinks he's, uh, he thinks he knows things, but he doesn't. Um, he finally cut his hair. Jeez, it took, it took long enough, dude. But oh, ain't geez. the flow looking dirty, though? It tell is, me, it is. Tell I'm, me the flow ain't looking dirty. I missed the flow. It was just way too itchy for tell me. Tell me the flow ain't looking dirty. It's looking me good. and Andrew are getting cold. Listen, dude, I, I, I told Andrew, Vaughn, and Brennan this, and they, and they gave me a hard time for it. Cornrows, what do you think? On you? Yeah. No. I'm getting cornrows. You better not. Shout out to Jay Gag. She said she put cornrows in for me. Zach Sims. I'll see you in. I'll see you in a couple hours, baby. You better not get cornrows. I'm just gonna have them for like two days. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, exactly. I do, cause then I could say like Vaughn and Brennan both got mullets. Like, come on, I can do cornrows. Why don't you join with the mullet gang? Cause I, I like the flow, and I, I, I want to go to a uh, college with the flow. Just cause then I'll be like, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, just cause then all those country kids out and. Out in uh, the Tractorville, all of that. I'll be like, oh, I like the flow. I'll be like, yeah, me too. Well, and then, then, you get, then you get like that baseball vibe going. Yes, sir, you. dude. Dude, we start baseball two weeks in. And then we go to like May, dude. It's going to be insane, dude. I haven't played baseball like for eight months at a time and forever. It's going to be insane. You have to have like social distancing on the bench. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Wait, I go in Oakland, right? It's just virtual first semester, well, right? Mac- Macomb then Oakland, yeah. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So, so you're just going to Macomb the next year, right? Yeah, so I'm going to Macomb this year for two years, and then I'll be going to Oakland after. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Are you going to run track? Is, is Macomb have a track? Yeah, but I'm not running track in Macomb. Why not? Are you going to try and run in Oakland? No. I, like, I had offers to run track in a couple different schools, but I was like... I just don't want the commitment of it. Track's such a huge commitment because there's yeah, indoor and hard. outdoor. Yeah, track so sucks. You're there like right away. I think you go, you go to school or you go back up there like mid August, and then you don't come home until right after nationals, which is like Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, it's so horrible. You're there the whole time. And you're practicing the entire time. It's the longest season in college, I believe. Yeah, well, it's because like especially track, like, like it can be outside or it can be inside. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess for football, you can have indoor football, but it's just like kind of arena football. Yeah, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's just like practice. I mean, mm-hmm. I guess that's what track is, but there's still indoor stuff. Yeah. In track, are you a distance runner or are you a sprinter? Mid distance. So I did like the 400 and the 800. It's 400 one time around. Yeah. On a normal track, like an outdoor, what we had at school, 400 is one lap, and then an 800 is two laps. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, it, isn't TJ a long distance runner? TJ can do literally anything and everything and come first. He's, well, yeah. TJ is nuts. D1, baby. Is it Oakland D1? <laughs> yeah, he's going to Oakland. D1 track athlete, baby. Shout out <laughs> to Terrence Kirkley Brooks. I should get him on here. <laughs> you should. I should get him and his, his brother. His brother's a beast. You know his brother? Yeah, his brother does uh, lacrosse, doesn't he? I don't know. Yeah, I just know he's cool. I just know he's cool. I'd always talk to him. Travis. Yeah. Shout out to Travis. If you're listening to this, shout out to you. <laughs> what up, Drew? How have you been holding up? Pretty well, Keegan. How are you? I've been doing good. I started a podcast. You know, no, since like the world's gone mad, dude, like, I mean, it, it like, I, how can I put this? I'm not going to say it's been good because like it, like it obviously has. Like people right. are dying, people are getting sick, whatever. That's bad. But like because of this, dude. My life's changed for the better so much. That's good. Like now, like because of this, I run a podcast. I get to talk to UFC fighters whenever I not uh, whenever, but I get to talk to UFC fighters a lot, and I get to have fun with it. And dude, if it wasn't for a baseball season getting canceled, I don't know if I'd be playing college. So, and then if I wouldn't, you know, I'd just be no, I wouldn't be looking forward to you know staying home for a couple more years. Why would you not be playing college? Because like I, it, it, I was kind of just like I was I, I was I was just on the fence. I was like, all right, you know, I kind of want to, but do I want the commitment? But then like. As soon as the season got, as soon as Chippewa season got canceled, 
And uh, I'm not playing summer baseball because my shoulder, which is it's all good now. I might play for Angie this weekend, probably not. But I might. <laughs> anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, but uh, because of this, I didn't want my last game to be at the University of Michigan, ugh, where I played one inning. And my mom got really mad at me at the end of the day, and it was just my mom there. I, I wanted my family to be from it because I played this since I was four. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I wanted my last game to be special, not just where I'm, you know, That's at the terrible. worst school in the world. And <laughs> yeah, go oh, green, wow. go green. Jeez. I'm not the worst school in the world. My mom's mad at me. It's just my mom. It, it, it was just I, I just want a Cinderella ending. So you know, yeah, I want to I hear go. You. I hear you. Yeah, I want to go out with a bang, man. That's why I didn't want to run track in college. I just didn't want the commitment. Like, I want to be able to go snowboarding or whatever I want without having to worry about breaking my leg. Yeah, it, well, especially in track, you know, you need your legs. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like track and football are, like, those two things where, like, you have to be, like, on the ball for all injuries, and you're, like, in a, almost a bubble. Because, like, yeah. dude, it, it, like, dude, I guarantee Trevor Lawrence can't do anything, dude. <laughs> Like, dude, I, I guarantee, Probably, yeah. I, like, there's no way Trevor Lawrence can be like, yo, Dabo, I'm going – I'm going snowboarding. Like, no, you're not. Yeah. If you wear a bubble around you, you can go snowboarding. Yeah, people like him, Justin Fields, all Justin those Justin Fields is good. Yeah. The, I mean, like, especially, well, I mean, that's obviously the top of the top of the tiers, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, but, yeah, like, still, like, I guarantee that those kids can't do normal things. That, yeah. Some of these, know. like, incoming freshmen who are walk-on, they probably don't care. Yeah. Dude, I, I feel kind of bad for him. Like, uh, all the incoming freshmen are, like, going D1, like, going to Michigan, even though they suck. Go to Michigan, go to Ohio Jeez. State. Like I, I feel bad for those kids because they're like, you know, am I even only gonna get to play three years? Like, dude, yeah. like it, it, I was thinking about it, and like because of this, like the next four years of like, dude, especially in college to NFL draft stuff like that, mm-hmm. you no know, MLB and NBA and NHL doesn't matter what sport, but because of that, dude, because of this, like all the next four years could be screwed over because you no, know, it's these kids who you no, know, it's these because I, I do know that uh, like. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just spring sports, but aren't just spring sports kids uh, are seniors last from last year allowed to come back this year? I believe so. so. That's why I think I think if fall sports this year gets canceled for college, they will give the se- the people who are seniors an extra year of eligibility. Yeah, that's what I think will happen. But then it's like, are they still on scholar? Because then it's costing the school money, and they got to bring in more freshmen, and it's, it makes a big mess. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure NCAA rules say you have to have 12 credits a semester to. Uh, be a full time student, yeah. Yeah, so she so had to have 12, cre- uh, twelve credits a semester to play sports. So like, I, I feel like no, it, it's gonna be no. Uh, if you're going to like, what's an expensive school? Like, it, Ohio I mean, State, Michigan, yeah, Alabama. Yeah, it, it, if you're going to Michigan for football, dude, and you know, you're not on a full ride. You know, you're paying like twenty grand a year. Is, that, yeah. is it worth twenty grand to play football? I mean, like, sure, it's Michigan. Like, that's yeah. that's. I mean, they suck, but it's cool. But like. I mean, I, I just don't know if it'd be worth it for them. Because at that point, if they're there four years, they already have their degree and whatever they have. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just – I feel like they're just paying 20 grand to play football. Yeah, so that's why, like, the seniors this year – so let's say they get an extra year of eligibility, they come back next year, assuming fall sports don't happen. Now the school is paying for a whole other class of more kids. Like, do yeah. they have the money for that? Yeah, I, 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 I don't – I don't. And, I mean, I, I think schools do have the money for it. just do they want to give it yeah, up would be the and, bigger question. I could be wrong, but I think you – your roster can only be so big. Yeah. So like, it, it, now, now you have yeah, a whole other. Sure. Cl- you have an extra class. You have basically five classes of kids that are on your team. So it's like, you know, do you you got to cut kids now or what? Yeah. D- d- and at that point too, if if it's these incoming freshmen who are getting cut or something, who are like, or, or I wouldn't say cut, but they're like, hey, you know, it, yeah, it, just not on the team. drops because they can't. Yeah, it, it, like and at that point they're like, okay, you know, I'm obviously not good enough to be up here, and then you know, and then they probably don't want to come back next year unless they're just really into it, and unless Michigan, Ohio State's their dream school, mm-hmm. you know, they, one of those schools their dream school, it makes sense to go back, but it just doesn't make sense for them to go, and you know, if you're about to be a freshman and you're you no, know, you're a highly touted prospect, but then there's a you no, know, say you're a five star D end. Say you're a five star D end and you're going to school where they've already got like a senior who's about to be a D end. He's a beast, mm-hmm. and then you know you're kind of screwed over because you're like, dude, like I should be playing right now, but yeah. instead, you know, I've got this guy who's four years older than me. Yeah, and you know he's already bred to the game. Yeah, that's why I wouldn't be surprised. Like, let's say fall sports don't happen. Let's say there's no like extension to the roster. You know, schools don't want to pay for an extra class. I would not be surprised if you see a large amount of kids go play JUCO, bro. Uh, because I will they, admit, they can play there, 
you know, JUCO, junior college aren't that expensive. And a lot yeah. of times they're not on scholar. You can mm-hmm. play JUCO. And, you know, a lot of times if you're really, really good in JUCO, you can go power five. You can yeah. go D1. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see, especially like the three stars, the two stars, even some of the lower fours, if they go JUCO. Yeah. Or, I mean, like, I'm sure if you're like a four star, I don't think that they'd like go like from D1 to J. I'd say they go like like a smaller D1, you yeah, know? Maybe like a uh, like a Mac school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like still, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I, I mean, I know we're talking about football, like fall sports, but like I know at least for baseball, for baseball, the, the, JUCO is a big thing because like, dude, mm-hmm. if you play baseball and you're halfway decent, you, you can play s- somewhere. Yeah. It, just because you know the rosters are so big. It's a cheap sport to to keep above the ground, and so you you always have the opportunity to go. It's just, mm-hmm. If you're decent and you want to and you work minimally hard enough, you can go somewhere. Yeah. So I mean I don't know how it is for football, but yeah, I didn't. Uh, what's his did, what's the receiver's name on the Vikings is really good. Adam Thielen. Yeah. Did I didn't he go JUCO for like a year and then he transferred small D. D two, D three, and then he transferred the Minnesota or something like that. I don't remember exactly his path, but I remember it was like it's, it's a weird path. It's a weird path. Like it's very unexpected. I know he was he was undrafted, right? Yeah, he was undrafted, super slept on, and now he's a beast. Wish his computer wasn't dead. <laughs> Stupid computer. It's oh my, my fault. I left it open. But yeah, no, I mean, it, yeah, I agree with you. I think that there that that'll be a lot more of a an option to mm-hmm. for people to I go think to. It'd be. You know, not just football though. Other sports too. I mean, if if fall sports are canceled, I think a lot of JUCOs are going to have a lot of enrollments because the schools won't have the roster spots for the you know the two and the three stars, mm-hmm. and they won't have the money for them either. Yeah, because I know that there's talk about moving like like in college and high school. I know that there's talk about moving the fall sports to over the spring, to spring. Right? Yeah, which personally to me, I think that sounds like a good idea. Like playing baseball and like. Like playing baseball in September to like October when like when the World Series is going on when everybody's in the baseball like in like I feel like playing baseball for a high school team in the fall where it's like sixty eight like it's perfect right there mm-hmm. and like I at least to me it just sounds a lot more fun. The only thing that I worry about, only thing I worry about is like I mean for example for Chippewas baseball team dude, we only had one, two I guess you could say kids who are who are. Sophomores last year were juniors, or no, who were sophomores two years ago when we had a season. Junior, we're we're going to be juniors on varsity this year, and they're and they're seniors now. And we've only had two kids who have played even an inning in varsity. So like, yeah. what I was thinking is like, I feel like the the quality of of recruits and stuff, the quality of everything is going to go way down because people mm-hmm. aren't because. And, and so I feel like it's going to be a lot harder for everybody. Because that's what me and Andrew were talking about yesterday. Yeah. Because especially at Chip, you know, we don't have the best baseball team. Yeah. I mean, I mean. Two years ago, you made it like what was it, like Final Four, Elite Eight, a couple years ago. I don't know. Varsity team, no. I don't know, but um, yeah, because I was talking to Brennan, and Brennan goes deal with Sally. He said that there's, I think three sophomores or three, about to be, juniors on varsity the year before, and so at least they have some experience, and they got some kids who can lead, have varsity innings. Mm-hmm. But like I don't know, it just seems at least to me it seems like all the recruiting, all the. It seems like all the recruiting, all the draft, like I saw one thing in the eye the other day, like Trevor Lawrence is obviously going to one next year, whether yeah. there's a season or not. Yeah. But like, Definitely. how are they going to determine who goes 176 yeah. or not? Because you don't have any film. Yeah, exactly. And so it, it, it takes a, you know, takes away from all yeah. the people who That's why had the opportunity. I think if they were to s- switch the spring and fall sports, okay. But then you got to make that decision now so that the spring sports – or, you know, the strings that are being moved to fall can start practicing. Yeah, exactly. right now, all the falls are practicing, you know, like cross country, uh, men's soccer, football. Those are all practicing right now, for at least for high school. I don't know about college, but they're like, my brother plays football. He's practicing right now. Zach, right? That's his name? Yeah. So if you switch the sports, you need to do that now so that the baseball teams can get tryouts, can get players practicing and all that kind of stuff, learn stuff. Um, same with, like, the women's soccer for high school is in – the spring, you know, they need to make that announcement now, get tryouts, get the girls practicing mm-hmm. so that they can be ready for a season. Yeah, like, dude, if something happens in the next month or so, and all of a sudden, uh, and all of a sudden, I get to Olivet and they're like, hey, baseball's a non contact sport. Let's move, or not non, but it's less contact than football, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Less contact than football. Let's switch those two. Baseball's a spring sport now. 
all of a sudden, you know, I've got, you know, a couple months to prepare for my first game. All of a sudden, you know, I got to worry about the game in like two weeks. Yeah, exactly. Which, the only thing, it's the same thing, it's the same thing that you were saying, though, know, like, do spring, like, athletes have enough time to even prepare mentally for that? Mm-hmm. Like, dude, would you imagine being a D1, no, I don't know if you know anything, I mean, you know a lot of stuff, but like, college baseball, dude, it, college baseball, no, let's say you're a freshman and you're going to Vanderbilt. Because Vanderbilt's like top top notch. Yeah, they won the championship like two years. They're ago. so good. They're so nasty. Shot the Dansby Swanson, dirtiest flow in the game. <laughs> um, dude, if you're a D one kid going to Vanderbilt, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you're thinking, all right, you know, I've got until you know when's the first game. I've got until March, February to to, to work up and get my and, yeah. and get reps in. All of a sudden, yo, I've got to play a game against. No, the number two pitcher for the MLB draft next year, mm-hmm. and you're freaking out. Like, yeah, I just don't know if people. It's it, like even if it was announced in 30 seconds right now, I still don't know if you'd have enough time. That's why I think if they're gonna, whenever they announce it, like let's say they do announce it, they should give like a two month pushback for the start dates for, you know, if they announce it for high school and college, especially for high school to get tryouts done and everything. Um, get all that set up because it's going to take a week or two to at least get the preparation and the setup done. Yeah, exactly. And then you need time to do tryouts for high school. You know, college, you got to get all the all those people who are for the spring, you got to get them on campus. Mm-hmm. You got to get them moved in on campus, ready, and then they can start practicing because, you know, everybody who's not a freshman for um, college sports in the fall, they're already on campus right now. Mm-hmm. Um, freshmen aren't yet because they don't go till yeah, yeah. Um, it all starts, but they're all on campus now. So you got to get the people who were going to be coming on campus at the normal date. You got to get them now so they can start preparing. Yeah. The, the only thing about the two month thing you said though, is like, say, you know, and say you're a high school baseball player and say, you know, from here, from today, the 16th, you push it till September 16th. It's a two week long, it's a two month long season. By the end, and by the end of the season, you're playing mid November. Yeah. Like, like I don't know if you really want to play in like mid November. Like, it's gonna be like 45 degrees at and during some games. Yeah. Like, I I mean That's like, true. It, it, like sure, it's, it's the same thing in April. You know, it, it's rough rough days. It's cold, but you yeah. know, I just don't I just don't know if there's enough time at this point. Yeah, I, unless you, unless I, you did, I would like to see season. college football get switched to spring though, because I I like dude, I can't imagine college football without fans. Yeah, I mean, like, dude, Penn State, Ohio State at Penn State, dude. It's, 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 that's always a way out game, right? That's why the fan, people underestimate who like don't know that much about football. Underestimate how big the fans are in games, it, especially dude. College football is the number one for fan support. Yes, Pet, like two, I think it was two or three years ago. I think it was the 2016 Penn State team. They won the Big Ten. Penn State. It was when Ohio State played at them. Penn State does not win that game if the fans aren't like that. Yeah, they don't win that game. They, they, I feel like you, that's how a lot of games are. You watch that game. There are so many times where. Um, Ohio State could not hear the calls. They could not hear JT giving the calls to the other team, you know, to his receivers, to his line, because of how loud Happy Valley was. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing in the NFL with uh, mm-hmm. Kansas City, Seattle, Twelfth Man, and yep. whatever they call it in, down in Kansas City. Like, dude, it's, like especially in, like I mean, like yeah, the, 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 there's always momentum switches in the NBA. Like you, you, whenever the fans get going, you know, you tend to hit bigger shots. But like, I feel like it's just normal. But, like in baseball, like dude. If playing baseball in an empty stadium, that's not that's not bad at all. Yeah, like it's just normal. Like, it's just like in in their squad scrimmage. Like, yeah. dude, even when you know it's a it's a, a scrimmage for football. Like like there's like there's people there, like coaches, parents, yeah. you know. Then there's people getting into it. There's all their scouts or whatever. That's another thing too. Like how are your scouts gonna get there? They're, like mm-hmm. they don't want to travel across the world. Yeah. That's why I wouldn't be surprised if for let's say college sports they do kind of a thing where you buy like a ticket. Like, you know, you can buy up to four tickets. And so, you know, you have four seats and then three seats, like, that are open. And then another oh, four yeah. that are Oh, yeah. I would 100% love that. And then, but then I would say that, you know, usher, like, have ushers take people to their seats. Yeah. So there's no chance of them going somewhere, hitting something, touching something, mm-hmm. make sure everybody's wearing a mask. And, like, student sections, I would say just either half or even one-third the capacity for a student section. Yeah. Like, dude, like, it, it was just a thing. Like, I can't stand wearing a mask when I go to, like, Meyer. Like, I'm like, all right. Like, I mean, like, I understand why, but, like, I, like, I still hate it's just it. It's annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, still I, hate I, it. I have to do it at work, and I'm sweating to death. And yeah, I me too, dude. Me. Dude, I, I, I've got mask knee coming in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some kid called it Jets. I was like, that's a good one, mask knee. Oh, my God. It's getting bad. 
But, uh, no, dude, if there's live sports, dude, I will wear six at a time, dude. Just be able to go. Like, dude, I was mm-hmm. thinking about Because, like, I mean, I don't know if you keep up on, on the UFC, but they've got the Fight Island thing going right now, dude. Dude, I would wear six masks, six hazmat suits, a, <laughs> a sweatsuit. I would do anything to go see a live, like a live, live concert, yeah. live sporting event, live anything right now. Yeah, I was, I like over quarantine. I, mean, I watched like every UFC fight just really? because it was the only thing on TV. Good for you. Good for you. That's my boy. Dude. That's my. <laughs> I don't boy. know too much about it, but I watched everything. My brother and his friends do. Um, every time there's a fight, they go over to the Schuster's house and they watch the fight. Dude, I, I, I was thinking, because I was going through people who saw my story yesterday. I saw Tommy saw it. I was like, dude, if I got Tommy on here, that would blow up, dude. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be like, dude, I would market the crap out of that, dude. I'd be like, D1 quarterbacks at my house. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. It'd be funny. I think Tommy lives around here, too, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He might be, well, because he's a sophomore in college now, so he's probably back up at school already. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because he plays football. Oh, yeah, you're right. I should probably text him soon. I'll text get him, him, on, get him on Zoom. Uh, yeah, I'm doing Zoom tomorrow with uh, Ian McCall and Gray Maynard. Ooh, Dude, Gray cool. Maynard, 2011 fight of the year with Frankie Edgar. And I'm pretty sure that that fight's in the UFC Hall of Fame. So, you know, I'm kind of a beast. Underground 4 is making it big. <laughs> and I never thought I'd have you on here, Drew. Well, I'm happy to be here. Finally, we can <laughs> shout about some sports. Yes, sir. We've got... We've got about 35 minutes left. I want to make you mad, dude. I want to make you mad. I want to make you mad. Oh, my God. I'm going to. All right, let's see it. All right. Jim Harbaugh sucks. I don't disagree with that. Okay, he thank you. He he can recruit well. He can do a lot of things well. He cannot win the big games well. Dude, I, I don't know if Jim Harbaugh can recruit well or if it's just Jim Harbaugh's at a school that can, can recruit well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think... I think he can recruit well, though. So, I mean, you look at Michigan, you know, some of the coaches have recruited, like, like Rich Rod. Rich Rod couldn't recruit. Brady Hoke, the GOAT. Brady, Brady Hoke is like, that man could recruit, though. <laughs> he got Jabril Peppers, who was the number two player in the country. Brady Hoke got him to Michigan when they came off of what, like a four and eight, eight season? Like a four, no, it was two seasons. It was a season before that. Oh. It was like the uh, like six and six season or whatever it was, something like that. You got Jabril Peppers, the number two player in the country, to come play for you. Brady Hope could recruit. He couldn't coach. Yeah, th- th- I mean, that's when I, like as soon as they hired, as soon as they hired Harbaugh was when I was like, I hate U of M. Go Green. Because <laughs> like I don't know, it was just something about Jim Harbaugh I don't like. And like I, I'm pretty sure it's just his demeanor. He's like, I feel like Jim Harbaugh thinks he's like top notch because the media thinks he's top notch. Like, dude, if we're talking about it, dude, it, if you sat. Nick Saban, Dabo Swinney, Ed Orgeron, Les Miles. I know he's not in the coach anymore, but he's, he was yeah, he good. He's at uh, Kansas? Kansas, yeah. Oh, okay. Les <laughs> Miles and Jim Harbaugh, all at a table. Jim Harbaugh would be the worst by... Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Jim Harbaugh, like... I feel like if it was that... If it was a five-man tournament, dude, like... I don't know if you know how high school wrestling dude is, but, like, if you're a high school wrestler and you're number one in the state... And then a number seven, eight kid is like garbage to you. Mm-hmm. Like it's in like yeah. the difference is insane. Yeah. Like uh, at at the um, at the state tournament, at the team state tournament for wrestling this year, uh, in the first round it was Detroit Catholic Central number one and Dakota is number eight, and Dakota lost seventy nothing or, so, or something like that. So it's just it's insane. And Jim yeah. Harbaugh would be nothing. Jim Harbaugh is he's a good coach. He's not a great coach. Michigan is a good football team. They're not a great football team. That's the difference. I mean, Jim Harbaugh, don't get me wrong. He's got a great resume. He's done those coaches that you named. He's done something none of them have. Can you take a guess what it is? Make it miserable. What? Make it miserable? No, he's... Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at least I'm not wrong. He's won at every level. He's succeeded at every level. Mm-hmm. He took San Diego, turned them around. Stanford, turned them around. Michigan, turn around. The 49ers, turn around. Nick Saban got ran out of the NFL. <laughs> he, played, he coached Saban, the Dolphins, didn't he? He coached the Dolphins. He had a horrible coaching career with the Dolphins. He was run out of the NFL. Jim Harbaugh took the 49ers back-to-back NFC titles and to a Super Bowl. Yeah, I Jim like, Harbaugh is a good coach. I think he just – he doesn't – I'm trying to know how to explain. He doesn't have that almost like what people say that go getter. 
he cannot win the big, big games. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that 2016 game against Ohio State it, it, is it, it, a bigger it, loss than people realize. It, it, was that the game where it's like JT was short? He was not short, but yes, okay, he was. he was not short. Uh, he was short. So that game before that game happened, you see Harbaugh on the field. Running, screaming, yelling, going crazy, going nuts. Since that game, I don't ever see him throwing the headset, screaming at the ref, getting energy. That 2016 game was a bigger loss than I think most people realize. Yeah, I remember watching that game. I was so happy. J.K. Dobbins, baby. J.K. Oh Ra- Wait, no, no, it wasn't J.K. Dobbins. No, it was Curtis Samuel. Yeah, Curtis Samuel ran it in, dude. What a beast. Shout out to Curtis Samuel if you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt he's, it. He's not even anything now, is he? Isn't he on the Ravens? I thought he was on the Panthers. I don't, I don't know. know. I thought he was on the Panthers. Or, or, yeah, it's, it's not the Ravens. Uh, I was seeing a marking for some reason. Yeah, I think he's on the Panthers, but he's probably back up to Christian McCaffrey. Dude, Christian McCaffrey's nasty, dude. He's Christian oh McCaffrey. Gosh, I'm sorry. Nuts. Dude, Christian McCaffrey is levels above Alvin Kamara. I got, what? Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. What are your top three running backs? Top three running backs? Uh... The top, our number one better be the same. Chris McCaffrey. Okay, we got that out of the way. Yeah. Um, most oh, I, I will say the most overrated running back before I get two or three. Most overrated running back is David Johnson. Arizona. He's not in Houston now, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can see that. Uh, because he, he had that one good year. Yeah, top three, in, in no order except except number one, I'm McCaffrey. I'm gonna say Derrick Henry, and I'm not ban- I'm not bandwagoning him. It's just like, dude, his speed, He's a monster. his speed, his size, insane. His strength is insane. I agree with you. And three, I wish I had my computer on. You want me to say my top three? Uh, I want to say my third. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get mad, Le'Veon Bell. If Le'Veon Bell has a dude, Le'Veon Bell's on the Jets, bro. Like, why he signed with the team with the worst offensive line in the league? Don't ask me. Yeah. But if Le'Veon, like, dude, Le'Veon Bell in Pittsburgh was was he at was one point was at one point the best running back in the league, in my opinion. Mines, I got McCaffrey at one, Henry, and then Barkley. Saquon Barkley. I'm not big on Saquon Barkley. No. There's, no I think then, that I, I think that he's like like more of like a hype train kind of. Okay. Like, you think uh, he'll fall off eventually? Yeah, I mean, like, like sure, in his rookie year he was good, ish. In his rookie year he showed promise, and last year he was pretty good. I just, I, I, I don't know, man. I think that he's more of like a, I think that he's like Odell. Like he's at one point the hype's gonna get to him, and then like he's kind of gonna That's fall. Why, off. I think Christian McCaffrey's kind of. I think the Panthers are basically running McCaffrey into the ground. Oh, yeah, because it's the same thing with it's, Mike Trout in baseball. Yeah. Like, dude, they're on terrible teams with nothing. Well, McCaffrey had, what did he get, like 1,000 receiving yards or something too, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure Christian McCaffrey had, like, more receptions than, like, most receivers. Yeah, he had, was, like, the fifth most receptions or something. Yeah. I mean, and he had probably top five most carries. Mm-hmm. Think, about, think about how many hits that is. He's getting run into the ground by that Panthers team. you got to realize – what you're doing to this guy. You know, if you want him for 10 years. No, no way. You're doing that is not going to happen. No I, way. I, know, I realize, you know, Cam Newton was hurt. You got to rely on the run game more. But still, you cannot be giving this guy 45 touches a game. And, I mean, that's at least 45 hits. Yeah, exactly. He's and He's going to get destroyed. I was amazed that he did not get seriously injured last dude, season. I, I had Chris McCaffrey on fantasy last two years, Same dude. Same here. Shout out to that beast, dude. What, about, what do you think about Nick Chubb? Is he in the Browns still? Yeah. I don't think he's good. I, no. I, 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 I used to be the biggest Browns fan in the world, dude. Like everybody made like, dude. I remember when they oh, beat. I remember the, that you when that, they beat the Manziel jersey. They beat the Chargers on Christmas Eve, dude. I was I was more happy than any Lions win I've ever in my life, dude. I was so happy, dude. As soon as they drafted Baker Mayfield, I hate them. <laughs> I hate Baker Mayfield, dude. I think he <clears throat> most over two most over three most overrated players in the league are Baker Mayfield, OBJ, and David Johnson. Okay. In my opinion, I don't think Odell's good. I don't think Baker's good at all. I think Odell's good, but he's too emotional of a player. He's if he would just, you know, relax a little bit, not worry about how many balls he's getting thrown to him, and do his job, he'd be so much better off. You know? Yeah. I mean, because every game he's a crybaby, kind of. Yeah. Every game he's got something to say about I didn't get the uh, you know enough touches or whatever. 
I mean, and he's got Baker thrown to him, so that doesn't really help. Exactly. He had Eli and then Baker thrown to him, so he didn't really take much of an upgrade. Yeah, I had barely any at all, yeah. if I'm being honest. Yeah. I mean, what's he going to get next? Mitchell Trubisky? Dude, don't sleep on Trubisky, dude. I don't know why everybody hates him, dude. Mitchell, I think he's good. The, he is the, so bad. The only thing about Mitchell Trubisky is I feel bad for Bears fans because they passed on Watson and Mahomes. Yes. That's like that's like when the Pistons took Darko instead of, <laughs> instead instead of, of Carmelo, like, right? Instead of Carmelo, D Wade, all those guys. It's took like Darko. Yeah, that was that was bad. Yeah, that'll be up there with with like pass up on opportunities, mm. dude. I, I, I was looking at uh, what's my dude? Stupid computer. It was it was the year the Lions drafted that one off. It was the year the Lions drafted that one offensive lineman. Oh, uh, Ladanian Tomlinson, Taylor Decker. Did you say Ladanian Tomlinson? Or not Ladanian Tomlinson. Something Tomlinson. What was his last name? Oh, Lakin. Lakin Tomlinson. Yeah, yeah. It was the year they drafted. Uh, it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was him. The year they drafted him, right after him went OBJ, Aaron Donald, and somebody else really good. Like, dude, could you imagine Aaron Donald on the Lions, dude? Oh, yes. I do remember that year because they had what was like the fifth or like sixth overall pick. Something like that. And then Odell went like 13th. Donald mm-hmm. went a little bit back there. Yeah. No, or was it? Was that when they took Ebron? Might have been that year they took Eric Ebron. If my computer wasn't dead, I could check. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was something like that where, where we took somebody who made no, who didn't do anything, and then like the next yeah. three picks were like Hall of Fame. No, not Hall yeah. of Fame. Eric Ebron is now a god. Dude, I, I don't know why everybody like. Yeah, he had some catching problems, but he was always pretty solid. It was, at least in my eyes. I think the part of it was because when he was on the Lions. As bad as he was, there was no one near him that was going to take his job. Exactly. So he got lazy. He didn't try. He just he moseyed around. He did not try. It's the same thing in baseball. You know when you're playing. Oh yeah, hundred percent. When you're playing at the high level, and then they put you down to um, like AAA or something. You're not trying. And then he realized, wow, this is not what I thought it was. I need to try. And same with college. He's bigger than everybody. He's faster. He North played Carolina, at like, right? Yeah, he played at North Carolina. ACC doesn't exactly have good defense. So <laughs> no, not at all, dude. He, he didn't have to try on the Lions. You know, he got his contract and everything, got his money. Exactly. He, he got too wound up in the atmosphere. He wasn't trying. So then he gets cut. He's realized, okay, now I actually have to do something. Goes out, tries, gets with the Colts. He's with Andrew That's a good year. He has an amazing year. He was like the best. He was a top three tight end that one year. And it's because he realized, you know, I got to try. I got to put an effort. I got to get this done. Mm-hmm. It, it, and well, now he's got a huge contract. He's eaten up. Oh, yeah. Is he playing for the Colts next year? Yeah. He is? All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Colts, Colts have weapons now. Dude, don't sleep on Phillip Rivers, man. Don't sleep on Phillip Rivers. The only oh, thing about weapons. him is Col- uh, is Andrew Luck did have, or Phillip Rivers had, he had Hunter Henry, Austin Eckler, Melvin yeah. Gordon, Keenan Allen. Like, I don't know if he's going to be, I don't know how he's going to be with those weapons. I think. Melvin Gordon's a name that's kind of just gone away. Dude. he sat out last season. The resurgence the is going to happen in Denver. Watch. I, I'm calling it right Melvin, now. Melvin, resurgence in Denver. His last season, he was a top three running back. I yeah, think. he was good. He was a beast. I, I think resurgence in Denver. The only, thing, the only thing about it, though, is I don't know. I don't know why he went to Denver where they got Philip Lindsay. Like, like, I don't think yeah. Philip Lindsay's good. But like, he's if not I'm bad. Yeah. Like, I, like in my I mean, eyes, he's not. He? He's, only he's little, okay. That was like his second year, though, right? Yeah. But in my eyes, if I'm Melvin Gordon, you know, I'm former top top three, top five back in the league. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I, I you know, I sit out a year because contract disputes. You know, I'm going to a team like the Lions where, you know, the only person who's taking my job is somebody who gets hurt, you know, when somebody touches him. Yeah. Well, I like, think- dude, if, you're carry- if I'm carrying on Johnson, I'm, I'm out for six weeks just because I did that. So if I'm Melvin Gordon, I go to the Lions. Uh, who the hell doesn't have a back, a good back? Um Arizona. Arizona, yeah, Arizona now. Like, I'm going to Arizona, not a place where they've got, you know, somebody who's young, cheap, yeah, and I up think, and coming. I think Melvin Gordon mentally thinks that he will beat him out. Yeah, it's just I don't know if I'd really take that risk. I would much rather have, you know, that for sure I can resurge my career and then, no, if I sign a one-year – because he only signed a one-year contract, didn't he? Yeah. No, if I sign a, a small one-year contract – you know, and then I go out there, and I have a year where I split carries with this guy. I don't get to show off as much as I'd like to. Yeah. You know, I'm getting the same one-year garbage contract next year with another team. I think part of it, though, is they offered him the most money. So I think really he just cares about the money, in yeah. all honesty. I don't think he really is caring about the carries, the stats. He wants the money. Yeah, it's the same or same thing with a lot of people. Like, that's what happened with uh, 
a Jorge Masvidal, if you know, the UFC fight. Yeah, yeah. Like, you get carried away with the money. So it happened to Conor McGregor, he retired. So it happened to Henry Cejudo, he retired. Mm -hmm. happened to John Jones, he retired. Like, it's all about money now. Speaking of money, what do you think about Patty Mahomes, 503? Oh, my, man, that's just insane. Insane. It's like a baseball contract. It's, ins it's insanely crazy as it is insanely stupid in my eyes. Yeah. Because, like, in my eyes, at least, in my eyes at least, I'm like, okay, I just sealed up probably, no offense, Tom Brady sucks, probably the best. At, in 10 years, he could be the greatest quarterback of all time, easily. Yeah. But in my eyes, I wouldn't give him 10 years. Dude, because. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I would say. It's all that, all that guaranteed money, dude. Patrick Mahomes is sitting in his house playing, you know, he's the 99 in Mad Dude. He's sitting in his house doing nothing. Patty Mahomes doesn't have to practice. He's yeah. still getting no. I mean, sure, it's not all five hundred th three, but dude, he's still What's, getting. How much is guaranteed? Is it like I don't a lot. It was like three hundred, wasn't it? Something like that. So an insane like, amount. You know, if this man, you know, tears his shoulder, he doesn't care. It, you know, you know, has what Drew Brees did: dislocates his shoulder, tears ligaments, everything, and can't recover from it. He doesn't you, care. You still got to give this man three hundred million dollars. Just, yep. I mean, he literally could get injured tomorrow. Not play a game of football again, but also not have to worry about ever making a dime. Exactly. He said for, I mean, like, I mean, dude, I don't even know what I'd do with $300 million. Yeah, it's, that's yeah, insane. Like, since this coronavirus thing started, we've been getting a lot of tips at Jets. And like, dude, like, I I can't tell you the amount of money I've lost, dude. And, like, it's only, like, you know, 300 bucks worth of tips, you know, dude. And, mm -hmm. like, I don't even know where, like, it's somewhere. It's in my car underneath the seat. <laughs> like, I, I found, like. I found twenty bucks behind my bed. I was like, "Oh, money!" Of course so, you did. Yeah, so I was like, "Dude, like, I don't know what I'd do with three hundred million dollars." Yeah, it just, like I said, he could tear his shoulder tomorrow, never play a game of football again, and be set for life. Exactly. I think that if there is a season, I think the Chiefs will win it again. I would say I think the teams that are only actually in it, like I would consider possible, um, AFC would be Chiefs. And Baltimore, and then NFC, I would say um, uh, San Francisco, the Packers, the Saints, and then I I want to say Tampa Bay. But I, at I'm the not same sold. Time, I'm not sold. I don't know. I'm not because sold because Tom Brady last year that was the first season that we've seen, you know, a Tom Brady, you know, father time catch up to him. Yeah, that was I'm, I'm not first, sold. That was the first season we haven't seen a All Star superstar year by Tom Brady, and so that's why. I, I, you know, they have the weapons. They got Gronk back, Mike Evans, Godwin. They have everything in place. They got the great defense, great O line, great tight end. Shot Sean Bunting. O <laughs> exactly. O OJ Howard. They have the weapons. They have the team. Can they produce? Yeah, it's just. I, I think it's the one thing that always goes back to Tom Brady's career, where everybody like, it, it, especially me. I think he is. He's a in my eyes, he's a system quarterback. Tom Brady's, he's named after Tom Brady. His name, his, his, I call him Carlos. His name is Brady. He's named. Do you call him me. Carlos? I don't know, but <laughs> he's named after Tom Brady. Uh, but my entire family's like, my stepdad and my brother are in the Tom Brady. Like I'm in the Conor McGregor. Let's put it that okay. way. And uh, so, and like and me growing up with them, you know, I was like, all right, I I always get a hate on this guy because I can't stand listening to them talk oh about him, gosh. talk about you, talk good about him every single day, every single second, every single day. Mm -hmm. And I think he's a system quarterback. I want to see how he is now with Belichick. That's why I, I don't think he's gonna be good. I think I don't think we can call him system quarterback yet because we've only ever seen him in one system. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can call someone a system quarterback when they've only ever been with one system because you don't know how they are with the other ones. So someone, you know, I'm trying to think who's a, who's another system quarterback? Um, who is someone like um, like a Cam Newton? Cam Newton was good. With some of the OCs that he's had, he was trash with some of the others. The, the, the only thing about it, the, the, I do like Cam Newton going to the Patriots, though. I think that's I, I think, think that's, that is that, so that, smart. That is for a him. good move by him. Because now you have Josh McDaniels in your corner. Mm -hmm. You've got good you know, offense coordinator. Got, I won't yeah, hate on him. Yeah, you got Belichick, who's arguably the best coach of all time. I mean, you've got some weapons. The page uh, the part of it last year was the Patriots were hurt so much. I mean, if they can get if they can get the receivers healthy, you know. You got Edelman, Nikhil Harry. You got a lot of guys, you know, Dorsett. You got a lot of guys who can do a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see how that plays out for Newton. 
the only thing about Cam Newton, it's just, it's the same thing when Cam Newton was in the Super Bowl against the uh, Broncos. Cam Newton gets emotional, and I, I want to see I, I want to see how that works with Belichick because I feel like Belichick's like the I feel like he's the like, Belichick yeah. doesn't show any like I remember one time he smiled I was like he smiled like he has yeah. teeth. it's like <laughs> That's I, I, I don't know it, I it'll be interesting. It'll, I'm in, yeah, exactly. I agree. I'm interested to see how McDaniels and Belichick handle Newton mm-hmm. in New England. If they can control him, settle him down, make him calm, collect, like like the greats are. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Drew mm-hmm. Brees, Peyton. You know, when they're in those late game situations, they are calm, they're relaxed. Exactly. And they're thinking two plays ahead. Mm-hmm. Cam Newton's more thinking about the emotions, how angry he is, I think. Mm-hmm. So it'll, it'll be interesting. Yeah, because no, it's, it goes along with what I was just saying. Like, no, Bill Belichick's like no nonsense. You, you get there, you work, you leave. Yeah, and you, you know, and I just and, don't. And know if you're not, you're off. Yeah, I just it's don't know if Cam Josh Gordon. That, I just don't know if Cam Newton's that is gonna have that. Yeah, and I think another thing most people aren't talking about it, but I think it's something that we do need to, that needs to be addressed in terms of the NFL is Jameis Winston going to the Saints. He's on the Saints. Mm-hmm. He's gonna be the backup. So he's gonna be a third string. He should be. The third Taysom Hill's the goat, dude. Taysom, yeah, I love Taysom Hill. <laughs> I love Taysom. But I don't think he's a quarterback. No, he's not. I think Jameis Winston going to the Saints and playing with Sean Payton is a great move. And so, what I think their whole idea here is is get him. He's only a one year deal. Most expect Drew Brees to retire after this season. Get him under Drew Brees and Sean Payton one year. He's not going to play much in games, so he's going to play in practice. Mm-hmm. See from now to um, you know, February, where he is at in terms of how good he is. There's no doubt Jameis Winston has talent. Yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, he just has to get that, that, that it's, IQ. He doesn't have the big, the best IQ. He doesn't, he's got the arm talent. He's the got eyes. the, he's got, the, <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. He's got the, he's got the mobility. He has talent. His decision making is lacking. And that's why Drew Brees on the Chargers was not that good. Uh-huh. I mean, Drew Brees only had two really possible places to go after um, San Diego. Yeah, after and he, it was, it was just, his shoulder. Yeah, dislocated shoulder, tore a bunch of stuff. It was either Miami, it was Miami, or it was the Saints. He chose the Saints, and look what's happened. Well, yeah, but the, it, 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 I feel like Sean Payton's a, no. Sean Payton's up to Bill Belichick, just great minds. Oh yeah, and Sean Payton I, is. I think Sean Payton, McVay, and Andy Reid. And then Belichick are the best minds in football. Probably, yeah. In terms of, especially, I, agree with that. I think Sean Payton, McVay, and Andy Reid, those three are just quarterback wizards. Mm. They are the best offensive minds in football right now, and arguably some of the best all time. In yeah. Terms of just offensive minds. Mm-hmm. Dude, especially McVay taking Jared Goff. Because, dude, everybody yeah. was mad when Jared Goff was the first overall pick, and he was he was the backup. Who was he even backing up, dude? Bradford, I think. Yeah, like, dude, because you might be the number one pick and you're getting your bench by Sam Bradford, yeah. dude. But it turned out, like, he obviously had a bad year last year, mm-hmm. but they went to the Super Bowl two years ago. Yeah. You know, and, and it's worked. It's, just, it's the same thing with Belichick, dude. He took a D2 guy in the second round that nobody knew. And in my eyes. Oh, Garoppolo? Yeah. About? Yeah. Like, dude, and now look at him. He's a beast. He, and he took Jacoby Brissett, a, you know, a not really huge out of college guy out of NC State. And I mean, sure, he's not, you no. Know, Anything he's not big. a superstar, but he's just, he was a starter. He's starting quarterback in a, f- f- what, 8-8, eight eight, 500 team? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And a subpar. No, he's a starting quarterback in a decent team. Yeah, and that's why the only reason we even know who Kirk Cousins is is because of Sean McVay. If Sean McVay is not the OC in Washington during I, Kirk I didn't Cus- know that. Yeah. If McVay is not the OC in Washington during Kirk Cousins' years, we don't even know who Kirk Cousins is. I don't think Kirk Cousins is even in the league if Sean McVay isn't there. Yeah, he had I agree. That, he had that one. He had that half a good season. And then the next season, he had a really good season, and then he went to um, the Vikings. Obviously, I don't think Kirk Cousins signs a contract after that season if Sean McVay is not there to get him that season where he made the Pro Bowl and made a bunch of just amazing year. Had an amazing year. Like I said, I don't think we even know who he is anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, do, what are your opinions on Kirk Cousins? Because I, I hear a lot of different things. I, I have my own opinion. What's yours? I think he's talented. He's so inconsistent, though. He's so inconsistent. He, one game, he'll throw for 400 yards, four touchdowns, no picks, and he'll have 70% completion percentage. The next game, he'll have two interceptions, one touchdown, 200 yards, 
and he'll throw like 52% completion percentage. He's so inconsistent. So inconsistent. Rank rank the NFC North quarterbacks. Uh, we got ooh, Stafford, Aaron, Kirk, and Trubisky. Trubisky. Okay, first Aaron, Kirk. Really, you think Cousins better than Stafford? I don't know. I mean, Stafford, same thing. He's inconsistent. I I, I don't know if Stafford's inconsistent. Though. I think Stafford has talent. Don't get me wrong. He's a he's a very talented guy, but at the same time, you know how many how many chances are you gonna give this guy? I, here's what I'll say. Has Matt Stafford ever had a comp- or has Matt Stafford ever had time to build a relationship with yeah, a coach, that's, that's with an offensive coordinator, with an offensive line, with a running back, with any receivers? I, yeah, I, exactly. I, I think that I think that it's the reason that the Lions will never be good mm-hmm. because the Lions think they have something and they'll work for it for half a year. If it doesn't work, they just give up on it. Yeah, and that's why I think if you put Matt Stafford on, I don't know, Texans. I think they win their division easily. Yeah. If you put him on almost any team that is at least a 500 team, I think he makes them win their division. He's a talented quarterback. I don't think – I think the reason people trash him so much is because he is put in possibly the worst situation in the NFL. So bad. I think you put him on the Browns even. Yeah. He takes them – he maybe wins that division because he's got – Or Baltimore, but yeah. Yeah, I forgot about Baltimore. Or – he gives them a run at least. Yeah, yeah. I think they make the playoffs. At least the wild card. You've got Odell, T- ten and six wild card, hundred percent. Jarvis, Ninjoku, um, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. Even you've got weapons everywhere. He doesn't. Kenny Galladay. Yeah, Kenny Galladay is good. He's not great. I, I think Kenny Galladay will be great. Yeah. In one point, the only thing I worry about is uh, like I feel like I feel like Matt Stafford's gotten time to build a relationship with him, so I think that could be good right there. But like, d- 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 I just think about it. When was the last time the Lions brought back like the same offensive line? When was yeah. the last time they brought back the same running back? And I back? think I think part of that, part of the reason that Stafford isn't that great, is because we don't have we don't have a running game. Nope. The reason we don't have a running game, we don't have an offensive line. We nope. get, every year we get these linemen from top ten picks, or we get these gr- peop- so-called great linemen, mm-hmm. and look what happens. There's a reason that the Packers did not make an attempt to sign T.J. Lang again. There's a reason for that. that it's not an accident that he was a free agent very easily. Mm-hmm. There's a reason that he was not re-signed. And then we go up him, give him big money, expect great things, and he was awful. Well, I, I feel like it's a mix of, you know, obviously the Packers don't want him, and obviously the fact that, you know, he was also, I mean, I shouldn't say, I should say he was getting old, but, but he, when you're, he was up there. He had yeah. been in the year lead for quite a while. Yeah, when you're an offensive line in the NFL, like if you have a career 10 years starting or just playing consistently, that's probably it. Yeah. Especially offensive line, you're getting hit every single play. You're mm-hmm. not playing much. That's why if they can get a half-decent line, you can get a half-decent run game. Mm-hmm. It's not that they don't have good backs. They they don't, they've always had good backs. They don't, decent they don't, backs. They don't have the line to make any holes. I think more times than not, the running backs are hit in the backfield. How do you expect to get a positive run game when your running back is hit in the backfield when the defense is doing a four-man rush? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, is this the same thing? Is we, dude, I was super happy with the Lions offseason. Very, mm-hmm. very. Desmond Trufant drafted Okuda. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, we lost Slay for a third round. Or was it a third or fourth round? It's not like that. Either Here, way, it was he, bad. He was probably going to sit out anyways because he hated the Lions. I don't think he hated the line. I think he hated the management. Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like there's a lot of things about the line. I, I feel like the management, I feel like a lot of people hate the management. That's why I hope the team goes up for sale. I mean, me too. I, I, I don't like the Fords. I just, I don't think they really know what they're doing. I don't think they do either. Yeah. But then, no, we draft Okuda. We sign Trufant. We lose Slay. We draft DeAndre Swift, dude. I like signing DeAndre Swift, but it's just like, I don't want him to go down the same path that, that like, who have we had? I don't want him to go down the same path that Kerryon Johnson. Kerry Ann Johnson went down. Mir Abdullah went down. Um, it, it, dude, when the Lions drafted, or when, not, when they signed Reggie Bush, dude, I was like, oh my god, dude, watch out for the Lions. But dude, Detroit sports, it, it's not just the Lions. It's all it's Tigers, Pistons, Red Wings. Detroit sports or legends go to die. Literally, Allen Iverson got here, died. Yeah, Jordan Zimmerman from the Tigers. Beast in Washington got here, 
fell off so hard. I, I I think the Tigers though are the one exception. The Tigers and Red well the Red Wings a couple years ago were the one exception. The Tigers almost produced the the MLB's talent. And yeah, did they much, they did. I dude. don't know too much about MLB, but I know the the Tigers five years ago had, insane had the best bullpen in the MLB. Five years ago, the Lions had the the greatest pitching roster. Of like you had, of well, the last fifty years, you had what three Cy Young winners? Uh, it was what Ver- Verlander, David Ver- Price, um, Scherzer, Porcello. Yeah, even that's when they four had, right like, there. They had Fister back then. And Doug Vesman faced servers in his prime. You had great relief. Anibal Sanchez, Jorge, Jose Valverde. <laughs> I forgot about that dude. Papa Grande, <laughs> that dude was a beast. He was awful. Don't even try that. He, he was you good had, for a year. You and had half. Joe Nathan when he was good, at least. You had. Easily the best pitching rotation in bullpen baseball seen in a long time. 100%. And you don't have one of them now. Exactly. And then same thing with, you know, the batting. You used to have just power hitters left and right. Oh, dude, it was you insane. Victor Martinez, Prince Fielder, Miguel Cabrera on the same team, dude. J.D. J.D. Martinez. Dude, they built J.D. Martinez from the, the – uh, the, yeah. that is one thing that you just nailed out of the park. No pun intended. <laughs> JD Mart like the Lions have taken not Lions the Tigers have taken all these random dudes and just made them into superstars. They, not not yeah. su- I wouldn't say superstar. I mean JD Martinez was a superstar, but like it, they drafted Nick Castellanos mm-hmm. and they built him up, and now he's getting a big contract in where's he at Cincinnati? Yeah, Cincinnati. I mean, you had, I mean they weren't great, but they they were great fielders. Exactly. You had Infante and um, Omar Infante, what a beast. Omar Infante and Jose Iglesias, who's got who had. Easily one of the best gloves in all of baseball. 100% of he, all time. Just a, ma- and I don't know too much about baseball, but I know about him. A magnet. 100%. Nothing, nothing. I never saw a ball get past that guy. Insane. Insane just, the amount of time he's going to put it. And just incredible just reactions to the ball. Mm-hmm. They easily had, you know, you go back five years, they're easily one of the best teams in baseball. 100%. Five, six years. You know, they made the World Series. Got they swept, were, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> they did, but they were... Incredible. They were an incredible team back when they had Leland. And then they get Brad Osmus, just tanks the team. Who is, their, who is their GM now? GM? Yeah. A- Al Avila. Or is he the owner? Or no, that's the Lilich family. I, I think it's Al Avila. Is that, or their, their main like head coach or whatever? Oh, oh, head coach? Yeah. It's Ron Gardenhire. Yeah. I mean, hopefully this guy can do something. Yeah. I mean, but, it did. I feel like it's it's another thing. It's it's another thing that Detroit sports do all the time. Detroit sports have nothing, and they hire a legendary coach with nothing, and he doesn't do good in two years because you give him nothing and you expect, yeah. and you're like, "Yep, you're gone. You don't can't do anything." Yeah. Like, dude, it's not like it's not Gardenhire's fault that he signed a contract saying I'll be the coach of this team, and you literally give him nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with the Pistons and Dwayne Casey. Dwayne Casey, Dwayne Casey, is coach a of the great year, coach. I mean, he took, you know, he built up DeMar, Kyle. He built up that Toronto team. Yeah, the, the, that, that, won the, 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 that won the championship last year. Or was that last year? He was, I don't think he wasn't the coach though that year. Oh, he, that was okay. His, that was oh, his, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm dumb. But I'm saying that team was built by him. You put him on the Pistons, you expect him to do something. You give him Andre Drummond. Yeah. And mm. Andre Drummond's not bad, but Andre Drummond's not, not worth it. Yeah, it, 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 that's the thing about NBA players. That's the thing about the NBA nowadays it's just, your your best player can't be a power forward, can't be a center. If if that's who you're paying your most money to, you're done. Unless it is someone like Joel, oh or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. the Joker, or Giannis. Yeah, but those guys, but it, Andre the, Drummond isn't on the same planet as no. them. I mean, like like it's the same thing as you said, Andre Drummond, top top, in my eyes, top seven center in the league. Yeah, but. Y- you can't be the the number seven center and being paid thirty million dollars yeah. and be and, and lead a team. Part of the NBA is built off of shooting now. Yeah, and our top two players, Andre Drummond, he's not making a three. Nope. And Blake Griffin, what is he? One out of five. He's rough at out the there. best. You you can, your top two and top most highest paid players cannot be people who can't shoot. Nope. And then you've got Reggie Jackson. Okay, he's okay. He's an okay shooter. He's not great though. Luke Kennard. He's getting there. Luke Kennard's getting there. He had quite a few games last year where he dropped, you know, four threes, four out of seven or something like that. Mm-hmm. Luke Kennard's getting there. I mean, you know, look at that man at Duke. He made everything. And then who's their center? They rotated or they're small four. It rotated a bunch. Yeah. But they I, don't, I don't they know. don't have a shooting team. 
And the no, M- and not at all. And that's probably going to be good. And the NBA today, if you don't have a shooting-built team, you don't succeed. Mm-hmm. You don't succeed. It's simple. I mean, I, did, I feel like the only exception is Milwaukee, but, like, that's just – that dude's but, I mean, another even, breed. Even Milwaukee, Chris yeah. Middleton, Malcolm Brogdon. Chris Middleton can shoot Malcolm Brogdon. George, uh, George Hill. Giannis can actually – Shoot, he can shoot bit. okay, you know, one out of four or something like that. I mean, the, the, uh, I mean that's still, I mean, it's not good. But. Lopez can step out and shoot for a center. So, I mean, even if your center, right. the, let's say he makes one out of ten, it's still, when he steps out, it still forces the defense mm-hmm. to cover it, that, it, it, which it, it, opens it's just up the having, middle. Yeah, it's just having the opportunity for, I mean. The, for even, it to go in. Yeah, even if it is a 20% chance that he shoots it. Right. Well, it's still, you know, 20%, you know, I got I, I to gotta go for this. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like... If it's Andre Drummond, like, okay, take it. <laughs> yeah, Andre Drummond goes and stands in the corner. That defense is going to stand around the block. Yeah. So they're not going to care. And that's, like, you know, talking about college basketball, it's standing with Michigan, with John Teske. They made him shoot threes, made him learn how to shoot threes so that people like Xavier Simpson, uh, Charles Matthews could get in the paint. If Teske doesn't shoot threes, Michigan doesn't make the championship two years ago. I mean, you know, same with last year. If Teske's not shooting threes, Michigan's not winning games. Mm-hmm. Um, like Mo Wagner. Mo Wagner <laughs> was a monster in college. If he can't shoot threes and he doesn't go out under the out under the corner all the time, that Michigan team is nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, it's just having the chance that it can be. It's the same thing mm-hmm. with football. It's the same thing with football. If you have two backs – you know, and one's not that good, but one's there. You're still an NFL back, even if you're not good. You're good. Yeah. And so you you may be not good compared to every, compared to the the people you play against. Yeah, but, but compared you're, to you're people that didn't make it in the league, you're a monster. Yeah, insane. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, you know, having a big man, even if he doesn't even make them, if he goes a game and he goes zero for four, the fact that he's even shooting them tells the team, okay. He's shooting them for a reason. He's not shooting them to airball. He's yeah. shooting them because he can make them. Mm-hmm. Forces the teams to need to step out. When you step out, you open up the paint. You open up stuff like um, give and goes, uh, pick and rolls, all kinds of stuff when that paint is open. I completely agree. Yeah. Yep. Well, we're coming up on an hour. That, that flew, dude. That it flew. Did. It did. Coming up on an hour. I can only do an hour podcast, so uh going to have to call it for today. Um, I want to thank Drew for coming on and debating a little bit. We didn't get to do some first take stuff that like like we wanted to, <laughs> but I feel like we agreed for the most part, except the fact that Tom Brady's not the greatest of all time, and the fact that Michigan football is garbage. Anyway, but we, we, we need to get into that because I respect Drew a little bit more. <laughs> uh, but that's all we got for today. I want to thank Drew for coming on. It's here for Drew, everybody. Thanks Thank for coming you for on, having me. No problem. You were my last option. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, um, 1 o'clock Eastern. Uh, former UFC title challenger Ian Creepy McCall is going to join me for a Zoom call. And then right after that, 2 o'clock, i um, be joined by uh, former UFC title challenger 2011 Fight of the Year with uh, Frankie Edgar. Or, well, I'm not, Frank Yeager's not going to be there, but it was with Frank, <laughs> with Frank Yeager. I'll be joined by Gray Maynard at 2 p.m. Eastern tomorrow for on a Zoom call. So tune in to see those. I am freaking out for those, so I need to write some stuff down. I got to work in an hour, and then I get to go eat some crawfish with the boys tonight. You got any plans for the night? I'm working all night. Oh, yeah, me too. All right, I'm not all night. 3.45 to 9, baby. Jeez, I got to be about 4.45-ish till probably around 11. I got to close tonight. That's, wait, are you still working at the restaurant? Yeah. Yep, yep. Well, that's all the time we got for today. Thank you again, Drew. And uh, I'll see you guys in about 22 hours. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you.